What is up my lovely friends? Candace B here. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. So glad to have you here. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Also glad to have you here. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. And today we are going to be doing another trade review slash market outlook preparing for the week ahead. And it's safe to say that the markets have just been absolutely wild this past week as we pretty much were expecting, you know, with everything happening over in Europe and NFP week, there's just been a lot of movement to the upside and to the downside in the market. So it's just been a whirlwind. It's just been a whirlwind. So that being said, before we get into this video, I'm just going to need you guys to stop, scroll down and hit that like button. And also while you're down there, you might as well subscribe, hang out. This is a safe space type of channel. So, you know, just talk to me, talk to each other. It's all positive vibes around here. I always move my hands so much, I don't know why. But let me not start blabbering, let's just get into this video. All right, so we have the GBP JPY on the screen. And as you can see, it looks like I've taken quite a few trades this week. Let me just say that this was very much a scalping week because I mentioned to you guys last week that I didn't even know if I was gonna trade or not. It really depended on a lot of things. And I did take quite a few scalps I was really just in and out the market, probably not in any trades for more than like two hours, an hour and a half. Honestly, I just wanted to be in and out. And I only ended up trading two days. So Tuesday and Wednesday I traded and I took about 10 quick scalps in between and I ended up being profitable this week. Uh, I did capture 14 pips, which I mean is better than I expected because I really did not expect to <sighs> to do well <laughs> this week. I mean, that sounds bad, but I just didn't know what was gonna happen this week and I still don't know what's gonna happen and that's kind of making me upset. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one thinking this, but like, I don't wanna say it's that I'm not looking forward to trading, but it's just like, man, what's going on in the world? It's annoying. But that's part of, you know, being a trader. You, we don't know, we never know what's gonna happen in the market, so it's kind of like, you just gotta adapt and go with the flow. And if you don't feel good, then just stay out the market. So I need to keep reminding myself of that. But anyways, not really gonna go over every single trade just because it's kind of clear what's been happening. A lot of break even trades. Uh, essentially, I took a um, sell as my first trade on Tuesday, and that would have been just pre London and it hit my stop loss, or I think I manually exited this trade just cause it was pushing up obviously. And then I ended up taking a sell once I saw, you know, price moving to the downside and took a buy here, took a sell here, break even, took a sell here, break even, took a buy here, which almost hit my take profit, but then it reversed and hit my break even stop loss, which was whatever. Took a buy here, got a couple pips, you know, break even, took a loss here and then, you know, took a buy here. So like, I don't know, it's just, a bunch of trades. I wouldn't say it was, you know, the best week I've ever had, um, just because, I don't know, I personally was just trying to follow what the market was showing me, but it was a bit difficult for me. And I don't know if anyone else can relate, but as you can see, price just plummeted um, at the end of the week. And it was just insane to watch. I was just like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I was so mad at this drop. It wasn't because I was like fear of missing out. I was just so annoyed that I'm like, why is it moving so much? <laughs> I don't know. Cause people are probably like, Candace, why are you mad that it's moving so much? I don't know. I'm just so confused. But anyways, let's just remove all these drawings. Um, I felt like it was smart of me though, to be scalping because I really did not want to be in trades for like more than, two hours like it was just i just wanted to be in and out and although i had stop losses and take profits set i was not hesitant to like you know cut my loss short i wasn't um you know too slow to like i was pretty quick to just take my profits wherever they may have been anytime i got kind of confused or indecisive i just exited the market um my only thing is that I wish I didn't kind of re-enter so quickly whenever I saw like a change of momentum. I should have just kept it cool and, you know, stayed out of the market, but I'm glad I did not trade Friday, especially because yeah, it was just insane. But I hope that you guys caught, you know, quite a few pips and I hope that it was a profitable week for you. Um, you know, and if it was a losing week, then, you know, we move, you learn, figure out why your losses happened and review your trades and move forward. 
So yeah, that being said, I just really want to figure out what's going to happen um, this week, or I just want to kind of set myself up. So um, let's just go to the monthly just because I want to see it's obviously the beginning of March. And so we have a new candle that is so bearish. Like, uh, see this. Okay. I like when there's momentum in the market. I think I just don't like when it happens so, so quickly that you're just like, what? Like, you know, I don't know. Like this is seriously a huge bearish candle for the first week of March. Like, honestly, it's just insane how much it moved because it wasn't even like a full week. You know, Monday wasn't even Monday was the last day of February. So the fact that March just came in with a vengeance and price just pushed all the way down. Um, I really don't know if we're going to stay bearish because, you know, right away you think, okay, yeah, my bias is bearish because the monthly is bearish, but I just feel like it can very well just skyrocket to the upside. Technically speaking, we are kind of in an uptrend on the monthly. Um, I feel like not until we break these levels, will we be bearish on the monthly in my opinion. But, um, yeah, I feel like right now, if we're just looking at this kind of action here from 2020 till now, we have, we've been pushing up. So yeah, but February did close bearish with a huge top wick, small bottom wick price already filled that wick. So that was just like, that's just that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We might still be moving down. We might move up. And as you can see, there was a huge gap in the market when price opened, um, because this was, this would have been the close of um basically the week before and then last week this is where price opened to push up and then push down and then close so there was this huge gap it did get filled as you can see so again that was that price didn't waste any time to kind of fill that gap um i know a lot of people question like oh do gaps always get filled i mean it depends on price like a lot of times I feel like the majority of times from what I've seen, they do get filled, but I'm sure there are times when they don't get filled. And the best way I guess to kind of figure that out is to back test and see. Um, but yeah, in this case, price did fill um, the gap from two weeks before. So this past week, we've just been very bearish, but we did have a huge top wick, meaning that we were pushing up at one point. You know, this wick is almost 200 pips. So we did push up quite a bit before just plummeting right on down. Let's go to the daily. So I see that we've broken these lows here. And technically speaking, this is, you know, a bear shen. You have this double top, you have lower highs, lower, lower lows. Price did end up breaking these levels here, like I just said. And so now at this point, I personally would just be kind of keeping it classic, keeping it simple, waiting for some sort of pullback to this level to see if we're gonna sustain it as a kind of bearish trend and then push down kind of sustain it or i guess if this makes a lower high and um, and then i would be looking to take cells just to see if this kind of area gets filled here um i think that that is the simplest way for me to approach the market to be honest just wait for a pullback and a retest and then a push down like wait for a level to be created um but if for whatever reason price doesn't sustain this level, if the bulls just come back in with a vengeance and push price up again, depending on, you know, fundamentals, depending on what's happening in the world, that is very likely that we can just see, you know, price shoot right back up. That's why I'm just like, I really want to see both sides. Um, I really want to, you know, be able to react and be flexible and not really have a specific bias just because like, I want to be prepared for both options, whether price goes up or price goes down. But if it ends up, you know, closing above this level, then I personally feel like, um, you know, buys would be a bit more realistic. Um, it really just depends. But mind you, this is just on the daily. So we'll go down to a lower time frame just to see um, more detail. I'm just going to delete these. Um, so, yeah, let's go down to the H4 and see what's happening. For me personally, with these um, market outlooks, I just try to look for a time frame that makes more sense to me. Although I use mostly all the time frames, um, and I feel like that is definitely important to do. I just like to see which time frame makes more sense to me because that's usually the time frame that I prefer to enter on um, in confluence with the other time frames. So H4, again, we see this level broken here. Um, I think this is a very pinnacle point. Um, we can easily just keep dropping. That's the thing, like this could be the pullback. 
this could have been the pullback and price can continue dropping if it wants. But for me, I feel like when I see huge pushes to one side, I feel like there is usually a higher chance that there's going to be a strong pullback. So in this case, I feel like, you know, there would be some sort of pullback. And I don't know if people use fibs, but let's just see what the fib level is saying. If this even makes sense. Yeah, like if price pulls back to this area, that's exactly what I was kind of thinking. You know, I guess a 38.2 fib level and starts to reject it, then I would have more confidence that we are still pushing down. Um, if we continue pushing down now, it's kind of like, I don't know where I personally would enter. So I'd probably just wait for a pullback. Honestly, I think that's the best thing to do is just wait for a pullback because it makes it easier for me to set my stop loss in a realistic place. Because if price is just dropping at this point, I don't know where to set my stop loss other than like, I guess above the previous candle, but you know, a lot of times that doesn't work out. So we'll see we'll, we'll just have to see what happens um right now obviously it doesn't look like uh bulls are really coming into play right now and it could be because obviously gbp is getting affected um by a lot of things right now um in the world and so i've personally been like glued to the news which is probably not good it's probably kind of affecting my mentality my mindset right now um to the to a negative way i feel like i think i i think i should be watching kind of you know something more light because the news is just really heavy right now and i know that i'm personally not experiencing what's going on and you might not be experiencing what's going on but there are people who are so it's kind of like it's just it's just tough right now i don't know man the world's messed up bro the world the world stays messed up it's so annoying but yeah um on the one hour i see that there was already a pullback i guess you can say but this is like friday so mm, do i really trust this pullback i don't know i feel like it can pull back up you know more it can pull more further up but um if this is the level to pull back we'll see but i hope that sunday night monday you know sets up nicely and uh, there might be a gap there's a high chance that there is going to be a gap just like how there was a gap um, to start, you know, was it this past week? Was this the gap? February 27th? No, was it? I don't know. Yeah, February 27th, that was the Sunday um, of last week. So, you know, we see this gap. So there's a high chance that there's gonna be another gap. Um, I don't know, to the upside or to the downside. And we'll see if that gap gets filled, if it happens. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna be waiting. I'm just gonna be waiting because although I did catch quite a few bits pips this week like obviously not a lot but still quite a few i don't know something just didn't sit right with me in the markets and i really don't know what um but whoever caught this move to the downside you are a g you are a gangster that was a 340 pip plus move so if you caught that move that would have been on the thursday and if you held that through london session and then through friday you are you are superwoman or superman, honestly. <laughs> uh, 30 minutes. I think the time frame that makes the most sense to me is the one hour, which is kind of becoming a norm for me. Um, but the 30 minute looks very much the same. Um, this could definitely just be, you know, push down, flag, push further down. You would think, you know, you would think it'd be that simple, but the market likes to throw curveballs. Um, so yeah, for buys, I just would have to see previous bear structure getting broken, which usually I like to stick to. So right now it's kind of difficult because like, I feel like this is where price would have to get back up to in order to break. And that's like quite a few pips, you know, um, to not take advantage of. But if this happens, let's say on Sunday night, Monday, then I'm okay. Like if price pushes all the way back up and because it did that in one day here, if it does that in another just single day, and then it starts kind of breaking these previous this previous structure then i would be considering buys but really until it starts breaking these levels up here i don't think i'd be looking for buys honestly i think that bears are really in control right now and as long as there is just like craziness happening in europe right now and if that continues for however long then i feel like we are still going to be feeling, you know, the bears, the bears will, will definitely be in control. So I really just feel like we are in such weird times and the market always reflects these weird times. So it's kind of like, okay, what can we do to like keep our cool and just like stick to our plan and stay disciplined and not let it affect us. 
And so that's what I'm trying to like work on mentally. Um, I'm definitely going to be taking these next few days before I start trading um, to just work on my psychology. I feel like that's definitely important. And um, yeah, just kind of turn back into optimism. Like I feel like I haven't been too optimistic in general about life. <laughs> so I think I need to work on that this um, this week because it does affect you know my outlook on the market and it affects my confidence overall. But yeah, I hope that this video was somewhat helpful or somewhat relatable. You know, it's okay to be confused when it comes to the market. Just know that like you don't have to be in every trade. And again, I'm reminding myself like you don't have to trade. You can sit and watch the market because there's always going to be movement. You know, we're coming towards the end of Q1, the first quarter of the year. Um, now that we're in March, I feel like even though we're at the beginning of March, I think that time's going to definitely pass quickly. So just kind of expecting Q2 hopefully to be better, um, to be more consistent, I feel like. Um, and I don't know. I feel like the name of the game is just being adaptable. I am definitely going back to my trading plan and just kind of seeing what I can tweak. I think that for me personally, being a scalper makes the most sense. Um, I don't want to be in the market for so long, you know, all this time, these past couple months, I've been trying to catch bigger moves and, you know, just staying in the market and trying to catch these big moves. But I feel like just scalping, being in and out 30 minutes, an hour, is good enough for me honestly i really need to just revamp a couple things um but yeah guys i appreciate you so much for watching i feel like i'm rambling so let me stop but like i said i hope you guys had a good week in the markets this past week i hope it was profitable for you and if it wasn't it is okay it is totally fine you are fine just you know reset and start new every week is a new opportunity so I feel like we just have to look at it that way. But if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by smashing that like button. I always appreciate it. And comment down below. I would love to hear your opinion on just the markets. Like, how are you feeling? Literally, how is your mental health? How are you feeling when it comes to the markets and trading? How have you been doing? Let's talk about it. Let's vent to each other. You know what I mean? If you're doing great, say it. You know, don't be, you don't have to be humble or timid about it. If you are doing well in the markets and this is your time to shine, then talk about it. And if it's not still talk about it it's good to vent and get it out of your system because then you can kind of put things behind you put the negative thoughts behind you and move forward so let's talk guys this is what i'm here for i just want to be you know that peaceful sense of community i just want to be that safe space for everybody and last but not least do not forget to subscribe so you know when i post another video and in the meantime feel free to check out any of my other videos on this channel and my other channel candace btv where i vlog but that being said lovely people i appreciate you so much for stopping by and i really just hope you have an absolutely mentally physically spiritually healthy day week and life bye